So it's getting a little dark out here, guys, but I thought I would show you guys the melons this year because if you recall, we had our melons strung up and trellised up along these EMT poles last year. And I really like that method, except I think it's better if you're in a greenhouse environment where there's just not as much pest pressure. Um, potentially I could do that again this year or a following year. Uh, I think if I choose varieties that actually are not as susceptible to the Fusarium wilt with the cucumber beetle, I actually would have a lot more success, I think, because what you see here, this is where our corn used to be actually, is that I cut down the four rows of corn and underneath you can see the melons. And I think it's a really good time actually, perfect timing for all of this to kind of start taking over. Um, because now they need a bit more sunlight. Now that things are starting to get more wet, not as warm, the leaves are starting to get some mildew on them. So that's a whole nother thing. But I think we could honestly grow them next year with these varieties, because I have in here a couple watermelon varieties, but I have two hybrid melon varieties that are, one's a, a cantaloupe, it's called Savor. Again, it's a hybrid that has really good disease resistance. And, um, that one, I believe, you could probably get away with doing that one vertically. It's not a very large melon, um, although you could support them. But also, I do believe that these varieties here, I also have Sarah's Choice, which is a musk melon. I think these varieties in here have performed exceptionally well. I did also discover the benefits of silica this year. Uh, using that in the summer garden has been phenomenal. I mean, you could see all the peppers behind me, how well the cucumbers have done, the squash, the eggplants, the tomatoes, everything in the summer garden. The corn that was here performed so well this year. And I think a lot of that has to do with the silica. So for me, I think we could probably, knowing what we know now on this topic, we could probably try to grow them vertically again. And that was my big, my big test to try to grow all these different heirloom melons and see which ones are really the tastiest, compare them, evaluate them. I just love melons. And believe it or not, we're now at August uh, 19th and I got my first melon harvest. A couple of days ago it rained and uh, I don't know exactly what had happened or maybe the rain had a part of it, but a couple of these melons, they actually had split. I had two melons that had split. One we harvested uh, that was almost pretty much perfect. This variety here called Sarah's Choice, this one's getting ready to be harvested, but if you pull off the top of it where it's connected to the vine, if it comes off very easily, that's when it's ready to be harvested, this particular variety. That's called Full Slit. Other varieties, you need to wait for the tendril. Other varieties may give you a color indication uh, the Charente type here, Savor, definitely turns a shade yellow is what I was told on Johnny's website. So for me, we're getting really close and there's actually a huge abundance in here, if you can believe it. I know it's really difficult to see, but I've got a melon here. I've got two or three back there. Um, I have one here that's almost ripe, another one back there. Uh, I have a couple watermelons along this this section here. The watermelons really, for whatever reason, didn't do all that hot. And these, you know, these cantaloupes and the musk melons are taking over more than uh, the orange glow watermelon, as an example. Really didn't do all that well here for some reason. Um, I do have some Blacktail Mountain, which is a variety that does well in colder seasons like mine. Uh, but overall, I've had really good success. And what I want to do now uh, we're going to talk more about melons as we go, but I want to show you guys the, the melon that I harvested. It's a variety called Sarah's Choice, and we'll talk about that indoors. All right, everybody, so this is the melon here, and I have, I'm very pleased to say that it's extremely good. Uh, this is a variety here called Sarah's Choice. It's a musk melon. And there's two different types of melons, really. There's, um, at least of the, you know, that you would think of, there's the cantaloupe and the musk melon. There's no such thing as um, honeydew, believe it or not. 
Um, so this is a type of musk melon, and you can tell by the outside where it gets these, uh, you know, these ridges in it. It's got that netting to it. This one obviously doesn't look that great, and I don't know exactly why that is. It had split out there in the uh, in the patch, and you can see that little split right there. I don't know why that is. Um, I do know that this variety you pick at full slip, so you know you can pretty much tell when this thing's going to be ready. Is that when you take this off at the top, if you can break that off, and it's very easy, then it's ready to be picked. So this one came off right away, but it also had split. So maybe there's a chance that if it didn't split, I could have maybe let the uh, melon hang on there a little bit longer, and maybe I'd have a little bit more flavor. I don't know, but overall I've been very, very pleased with it. And this is a hybrid, so I'm not gonna save seeds from this guy. But I picked this one up from Johnny's after really trialing a many, many different types of uh, musk melons and cantaloupes last year that were heirlooms, really highly regarded varieties for flavor. But I figured this year, instead of really going nuts with that, I want to try something and just stick with something that's really the standard, something that's got really good fusarium wilt resistance and other disease resistance. I know heirlooms can have that good resistance to it, but you know, uh, I think it really goes a long way with these hybrids. At least this year, I was really surprised. So this is it. Um, been overwhelmed, and I may have mentioned that to you guys in the past here, um, about my obsession of melons nowadays, because they're just so darn good after I went to Japan. Really got to experience some incredible varieties of melons, and I just was hooked at that point. I said, I got to try to grow myself some melons. And... You know, this is really the first one since my Japan trip that I think is of quality. The flesh is a little hard. So it kind of tells me that it is sweet. It does have a good flavor to it. It has a great smell. But the fact that the flesh is hard maybe tells me that it's not perfectly ripe. What do you guys think? Let me know uh, if you have any experience with splitting. This weird yellowing color on the exterior, I don't think that's normal because <laughs> it should have a like a gray netting to it and maybe uh, just a hint of that yellowing on the outside, but this is truly yellow. I mean, that looks really yellow. And some of you guys may think, oh, it's overripe, but that's not the case. I mean, the, it's very firm. It doesn't taste fermented in any way. It doesn't taste off in any way. So I wonder if something you know happened to the vine or whatever the case may be and why this is that it's split, but it's still very, very good. I'm really happy. Really no disease other than some, um, you know, uh, as you saw out in the field, it's it, you know there's no um, fusarium wilt. There's very little cucumber beetle damage. So for me, that's a big win. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you. Hit that subscribe button for me. We'll see you guys soon. We're going to continue to talk about these melons as the other varieties ripen. And uh, we'll get some watermelons, I'm sure, at some point. And yeah, enjoy.